So, the next thing is the camera. Um, it's got an 8 megapixel camera, which is uh, kind of exciting, but it looks like it becomes standard for all the new uh, media phones from Sony Ericsson. So, let's activate it. Um, it's got a double activation for the touchscreen. Once you press this button or even the camera button, and then you still have to activate the media menu, which you do by using the touchscreen. So, um, let's activate the camera either via pressing the touchscreen or this button. I prefer the old, good old fashioned camera button to do so. Um, I've already taken some pictures that I'm going to put onto our Flickr account later on. So what we got here is the camera and its settings of course. I can now take pictures of this odd and strange looking object but it's going to show you something about the quality of taking macro pictures because it's pretty close. Actually the camera is on the very left hand side of the phone so it's a bit confusing because if you look at this front screen objects uh, that are in the back left are then in the middle. So uh, you might be confused in the first place but later on you just move the camera on its own. I've just taken this little picture I could now do something about it like delete it, zoom in, optimize it or send it. If it's sent it's of course not being sent via uh, with a full 8 megapixel resolution it's going to be reduced in size. I may zoom in I'm going to show you how so what I do to activate the touchscreen is press the touchscreen, press the uh, little button on here and then I may zoom into the object. Um, in the first place it's not a very good quality but then it optimizes a bit so you may see how it looks like and you may just move it with your finger again that's pretty handy. So uh, that's uh, basic functionality. There's not very many things you may optimize in a picture actually. Um, so let's get back to uh, how to take pictures and there's some settings. It's now set to 8 megapixel as it says in the lower left corner. There's 1731 pictures left which should be sufficient. And you may do some settings down here. So let's press the settings button. Um, there is, of course, geotagging as this phone has a GPS. You may change the size. The format now is 4 to 3. You may change to 7 megapixel, 6 megapixel, 3 megapixel, and full HD. And 6 and full HD come in 16 to 9. The other ones are uh, bigger in total size but doesn't, don't fill, fill the whole screen. There is, of course, also a self timer of 2 seconds, 10 seconds. Two seconds would be nice to see people run from that. The auto flash that you may switch off, but you not, you cannot force it on. There's a macro mode, a face detection mode um, to use, uh, the infinite mode, and of course there's different scenes. So sports is something you may do. Documents, twilight, landscape, quite a lot of settings actually to do. There's no uh, best pick in here, which is a bit of a pity. Okay, taking a picture is pretty easy. Press the upper left button and the, uh, the upper right button. There you go. But taking pictures is not the only thing. You may also take videos and therefore you press the button and you can just be uh, decide between still and video mode and view mode. But we're going to use the view, mo view mode as last. So let's have a look at video. Actually, this is video and it's NHD. So you may ask yourself, that sounds pretty cool, it does, is it HD? And I'm sorry I have to tell you, no it's not. Because NHD sounds pretty neat, because it sounds like HD, but actually it's even lower resolution than uh, HD, uh, than VGA uses to be, because it's 640 times 360. No, it's 640 times 320, and VGA is 640 times 360. So it's less, but it's the format 16 to 9. So if you want to upload to YouTube, that might be the right format to go for. Again, you may use some settings, switching off the microphone, switch on the light, use a night mode, um, use the settings to ch uh, choose the right format. I'm going to go for VGA because it's a slightly higher video resolution then. And here we go. But you see the format is 4 to 3, so uh, might not be the optimate. Yeah, 
so I got 5 hours, 25 minutes, 09 seconds to uh, record video. I don't know how much video uh, you'd like to take. This is definitely too much. It's all stored in the, on the uh, SD card, which is in the phone. Um, uh, but taking short videos should be okay. Okay, so much about video. Let's have a look at the pictures themselves. And therefore, we can go to the view mode. It now turns into view mode. Um, the first thing it shows me is of course the video I've just taken because the view mode contains all the media I've ever done. So this is all the pictures I took and I'm gonna, definitely going to upload them to, um, to our Flickr account so you may see how the uh, picture quality actually is. Uh, taking some pictures from the outside of the user base office. Uh, some flowers in macro mode. Um, so yeah, you may decide if you like the picture quality or not. Um, to move them, you can just use uh, either regular or landscape mode. It has the motion sensor and it's been activated uh, also in the uh, view mode, so me, you may get the very best impression, but I would recommend the landscape mode because it shows the pictures the best. Okay, once you've found a nice picture, of course there's some stuff you may do with it. You may optimize the picture send the pictures pretty much what you'd expect from a phone like this so much about pictures and video um, hope you're gonna enjoy that and yeah definitely take a look at our Flickr account because then you're gonna see if it's a decent quality or not so what's my conclusion the conclusion is um, it's a very nice idea to combine a regular keypad and a touchscreen phone. I didn't think so in the first place because I thought, well, the world goes touchscreen, uh, why do you do it only half? But what I have to admit is um, that typing on a regular keypad is something I'm really used to. So um, uh, this is just like coming home, but it still implies like so many of the new features. It's got the obvious uh, functions that you'd expect from a touchscreen phone which is super much multimedia blah 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 uh, at the same time you got a very um, decent um, regular Sony Ericsson menu uh, actually the menu is not that exciting as I have to say it's nice it's something that you're getting used to so people who used to have a Sony Ericsson phone before uh, for them it's an easy switch towards something touchscreen, something familiar that you're used to. Um, overall, um, the only thing I'm actually missing, to be honest, is the 3.5 millimeter jack um, for the multimedia. I, I would expect that from a, a modern phone um, and I'm, I feel kind of like pretty sorry they didn't implement it, but maybe that's going to be um, an option in the future. Of course it has A2DP, so I can stream that stuff, uh, but nevertheless, it uh, would be nice if you put all your mo uh, mobile music on it to have uh, that option to use like a regular headset. But the rest looks cool. I gotta say, it's uh, quite some good manufacturing. The software is okay. It's sometimes uh, a bit slow, but um, you wouldn't implement the latest uh, processor, but I mean, when it comes to multimedia, it's hardly beatable, except for example by the Satyo. Um, so, um, you should definitely have a closer look at it. <laughs> I already said so uh, with the Satyo, but yeah, you should definitely do. And um, um, yeah, um, consider buying it, uh, depending on the purpose. For multimedia, it's the right phone.